Right, so today we're going to show you how to do an absolutely incredible tri-tip. Now, tri-tip is a kind of a strange cut of meat. It's, it's really in that little corner, that triangle, where the hindquarter meets the body. It's almost like a hip flexor. It's like the, the, that bit, that muscle that pulls the hind leg forward as, as the cow is walking. I'll try and find a picture and splice it into the video, um, if I can find one. Um, just, yeah. just so that you can see because tri-tip is actually very very common here in, in California but apparently not even in some other states in the country let alone other places in the world so you might need to go to your butcher and explain to him where that cut of meat comes from so that uh, he might be able to then get it for you or do it for you yeah. the thing is that compared to a lot of the other cuts of meat it is relatively cheap. If I'm looking here, this piece here cost, uh, the standard price is $6.99 a pound, which is way cheaper than, you know, the ribeyes and, and a lot of the other uh, fancy cuts. And this was even on special at $4.97 a pound. So this whole piece here cost 16 bucks. And that's going to be good for at least two meals for, for Pam and I. And that works out at about $4 a person per meal, which is which is really good. So what I didn't say in the beginning was that the first thing that we need to do is actually take the meat out and at least an hour and a half before so that it can get up to room temperature. Um, it's really important, you'll see later, we actually cook it at a very low temperature. And so in order for that to actually work, it needs to be at room temperature before you even start. So we get the, uh, we get the meat out of the fridge here. And if it's wrapped in paper, or in, in this case, like in a polystyrene dish, those things both act as insulators. And so you can put it out for an hour and a half, especially if it's wrapped in paper, and it still won't even have, have started to warm up because the paper's been insulating it. Same as this polystyrene tray. So take it out of the paper or take it out of the polystyrene and uh, put it in something like this and there we go we leave it for an hour and a half and then we'll come back and start the whole cooking process the first thing you needed to do was put the oven on because while we're doing this it needs to heat up it's actually a really low temperature Pam was even surprised when she heard about it the first time but at 275 degrees Fahrenheit which is 135 Celsius for those of you who have a, an oven in Celsius. So I'm going to set that up now 275 let that start heating up while we do the rest of it. So we got this new instant pot for Christmas and We did we uh, one of the other big roasts that we do is a um, like a pork shoulder and We find them that's another deal like in, in sprouts They have regular deals where they sell those things at 99 cents a pound so you go in there and you buy a 10, 11 pound pork shoulder that costs literally 10 bucks. And um, yeah, there's a, the, uh, the shoulder bone in there, so that's probably maybe a pound and a half. But that's still leaving you with eight, nine pounds of meat for 10 bucks. Incredible. And we, we had really good recipe um, to do that in the oven, but it takes a few hours. And, and then we got this Instant Pot and we found that we, if we broke it up and actually put it in the Instant Pot, it was fantastic. And uh, we should probably do a video on that at some point as well. But then we went and tried tri-tip in there, expecting it to be just as good. And it sucked. It was like, we did, we did it a few times and we tried shortening the time and shortening the time that, that was specified in the recipe. And it came out dry and tough and terrible every time and we still haven't worked out why maybe one day somebody will actually teach us how to do it in the instapot and then we can do it for you guys but um, I started looking up recipes to do it in the oven I found about three or four that looked like they were making a tri-tip that looked at least in the pictures and the video like it looked really good um, and this is kind of an amalgamation of, of all of those different recipes and the best one that I think I found that then that we've tried it now and proved it um, is 
what most people seem to call the reverse sear method. So basically you cook it at a very low temperature to get it cooked through to the temperature or the amount of doneness that, that you want. And then you just sear the outside, let it rest, and, and it's fabulous. Um, so the, the best example that I found, the lady did it, she cooked it, and she, she put this um, probe in that had some wires so that the, the, it's, it's basically a meat thermometer, but it's, it's got long wires and, and, a, and a display, digital display, so that you can actually leave the probes in the meat and have the display come out through the door basically of the oven and sit on the desk so that you can see what, what the temperature is as it's cooking. And um, we didn't have one of those. But what she did do was give us uh, um, the weight of the meat that she cooked and the time that it took to reach uh, the temperature, the desired temperature. Now she cooked it to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, internal temperature. And it looked really nice and rare, um, but it's kind of something that you've got to play with because um, she had 1.6 pounds of meat and she did it for exactly 30 minutes. We had, the last roast that I did, we had 3.6, which is more than double. And I cooked it for exactly an hour. And it was brilliant, but I feel like it could have even been done just a few minutes less to be just a bit more on the medium rare side. Um, so, but that's all. I mean, it depends on your, on your oven, uh, on how, how accurate the thermometers are that you read. I mean, we've got this, this little funky old thing here that um, I'm still not convinced that it actually reads properly. And the very first time I tried to do it, I kept putting this thing while it was cooking and it never got up to the temperature that I was, it never got up to 130. Um, and then by the time we, I decided, okay, well, I, let's, let's just carry on with the rest of it. Um, it was overdone. Um, it was actually still pretty nice, but it was, it wasn't, it was me over medium. It definitely was a medium rare. So, if you have one of those fancy gizmos, 130 is a, is a starting point. If you're looking for it medium rare-ish, um, I would probably set mine to 128 or 129. Um, and then see where it goes. But that, that's up to you. You guys need to decide how well you want this thing done. Um, very easy. The basic ingredients, of course, salt, and even just that. What one of the, the, the people that, that I was look, you know, looking up in recipes on, on the internet um, was saying that that's, that should be it. It's just salt. Um, some of the others put pepper on as well, and so I'm going to go with the pepper as well because I like that flavor. We go with the white peppercorns. Um, Again, because the black peppercorns, uh, that skin, that black skin has oxalates in it, pretty high in oxalates, and we're trying to eliminate oxalates from our diet, so we go with the white peppercorns. But if that's not a concern for you, um, black pepper is just as good. All right, and then we need some butter as well for the bit, the bit later on when we do the, when we sear the outside. Okay, so basically, um, You'll see that it's at the bottom, it's got a really nice um, layer of fat. And um, a lot of the recipes that you see on the internet, they're going cutting all the fat away because everybody's so phobic about fat. But if you're watching this, most likely you're looking or considering the LCHF for the keto diet. And obviously fat is our friend. And so um, unless it's like huge wads of fat, um, I'm not cutting any of the fat off here. Um, so what we're going to do is start with the with the back side of it, and very liberal, which is something else that um, I I took on faith when I when I tried to copy this recipe because my and if you watch my built on movies, uh, and um, you'll see that I put the, the meat in in salt, I put it aside for an hour or two, and it drains a whole lot of the fluid 
off the meat and starts the actual curing process, which is what we're trying to do there. And so I've read a lot of people that say that if you're cooking steaks or whatever, that you don't put salt on beforehand. Um, you salt to taste once it's cooked so that it, the salt doesn't draw the moisture out while you're cooking and actually um, make it drier than it, than it could be. Um, this recipe calls for a lot of salt and I just went with it and I have to admit that it turned out brilliant. So this is what we do, right? So, and we're using kosher salt here, but you can use regular coarse salt as well. Um, just spread that out pretty nicely, very liberally as well. Okay, and then pepper to taste. All right, and then we flip it over. And I've got a, some a foil at the bottom of this pan here. Um, that's what the recipe did, and it, I think it, what it does is makes it really easy to clean the pan afterwards. But um, I don't think you have to have foil at the bottom if, if that cleaning the pan is not a concern for you. I think I'm going to do the pepper first on this side. Okay. And then So, pop it in the oven. The last time I had 3.6 pounds and I did it for an hour. And I did some calculations on, on the calculator and this is 3.2. And so, if I have to do it for exactly the same amount of time relatively for its weight, I needed to do it for 53 minutes. And since I wanted it a little bit rarer, I'm gonna go with like 51 minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer for 51 minutes and um, and then we'll come back and do, show you how to do the searing bit, which is actually really easy. And think about that. It's like, f even for the biggest one, you're looking at an hour cooking, maybe five minutes to do the searing, 10 minutes to rest, and it's ready to eat, which is pretty brilliant. So we've got a few minutes left here before the um, meat is ready and the next piece is to actually do the searing, right? So I'm going to put this, I'm using this pan here, I'm going to put this on high and you can use, some of the recipes that I saw used olive oil. Now, first of all, I'm not that enamored with the flavor of olive oil, but on top of that, one of the things about olive oil is if you're cooking it at, at these um, very high heats, it oxidizes and um, actually is, is a bit of a problem. So it's much better to use some other form of saturated fat, duck oil, bacon grease, although that adds some strong bacon flavor to the meat. If that's something that you really like, then that's very cool. I've tried that a couple of times. What I found I like the best is just to use plain butter. So I'm going to throw a whack of butter in here. Okay. Half a whack of butter. And as that's uh, get that to melt a bit. We got a couple of minutes left for the uh, for the meat to be ready and then we start braising it. So um, I got a set of, of these for for Christmas. It's the small one I use for cooking bacon all the time and I must admit that when I looked at this one I thought what the hell am I ever going to use this for? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we found this recipe and now I use it all the time. Okay so the meat's ready. Take it 
stick in it over here too. And I'm going to use this funky old meat thermometer that I've got. It takes about forever to get up to temperature, but at least we'll see how that goes. Okay, we're waiting for the pan. Looks like it's getting pretty close to, to sizzling hot here. Yeah? So 45 seconds on each side. That's what we want to do. So you've got your running watch. So we start with that. Set back on high, I think. Which, which timer are you using? Your yellow running watch. Yeah. See, it's still Set a it bit, it's a bit low. Yeah, you want you need to be sizzling more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More than 45 seconds on that side. I can always come back to that. Is it over? Brown. That looks like it's doing okay. Yeah. So was that the fat side down there, or was that it? Was the, that was the fat side down first, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cut that out. Okay. And then you do the edges as well. I was wondering about that. Okay, and then put it on your cutting board and let it rest for 10 minutes. So we'll come back in 10 minutes and uh, carve it up and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's been sitting for 10 minutes and now we're kind of ready to carve it. The first thing you need to, to kind of take, see here is if you've got the whole tri-tip, it's actually kind of in two parts. Um, and so the grain runs in different directions in different pieces of the meat. So in this section of the meat, the grain's running like this. And in this section of the meat, the grain's running like this, okay? And you want to carve it directly across the grain. You want it to be nice and tender. So what we need to do with this is, is cut it down the line where, where the, the grains change. And it's actually quite easily visible. It kind of lines like right here. So you're gonna do that first. Okay, and then I'm going to move this to the back. And what I'm going to do is put the piece I'm carving on a plate. Now, a plate's not ideal um, because it's kind of curved and it's it's hard at the bottom as well. It's not so cool to to carve on there. But um, the last time I did this, there's so much juice in here that it actually overflowed this little moat ar around the carving board. And we're trying to avoid that the juice is flowing all over the, the table and we want to conserve them to make if we want to make gravy or something like that. So, so we're just going to put this piece here. And this grain's running this way now, so we're going to cut it this way. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So it's the end cap. Okay, that's already that's kind of medium-ish. But the end caps are a lot thinner and it's always going to be a little bit more medium than medium rare. We, we're aiming for the medium rare look here. And I'll start to look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. It's this making my mouth water. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Surprised I managed to cut so many without actually having a taste. <laughs> Okay. 
Man of God. Dead under there. And take a look at this. It's just spectacular. And the same thing, I mean, this needs just breaks apart like this. And uh, it's just fabulous. And cut it into more civilized sizes. Because you put the salt and pepper on it, um, there's no need to, there's no added spices, don't need to add, it's just put it on the table and eat it. Well, eat it before it even gets to the table, which normally happens in this house. <laughs> um, okay, so that's it. Maybe next time uh, we'll do that uh, pork shoulder that we talked about in the Instapot. Okay, thanks. <laughs>